Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We center our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. Continuing the first book of Kings with this story of Eliah. Eliah, uh, first of all, what precedes this reading is Eliah had just defeated the false uh, prophets of Baal, of King Ahab. So Ahab wants to kill Eliah. So he travels 40 days to the south to Mount Sinai. That's where Moses got the commandments. And he listens, to, he, wants to, he, wants to, he wants to have an experience of God. And God is not in the earthquake or the fire or the wind, but God is in the whisper. That's the presence of God. And that whisper in the gospel, we're continuing the Sermon on the Mount. You've heard that it was said, but now I say to you, today it talks about marriage, divorce, lust, and adultery. It all starts in the mind. So we enter the mysteries, celebrating again forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you call us to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to give us yourself. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you challenge us to give of ourselves. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We continue to pray. Lord eternal God, as we gather again, offering this time of praise and thanksgiving, help us to listen to you, not only to your words, but how you move our inner spirits to respond more fully to your love. May this word then and sacrament become visible in us, in our actions of love and unselfish care for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior in Christ, who lives with you, Father and Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading, from the book, a reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah had hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Mahaha, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, I long to see your face, O Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. 
Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper, cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. So Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, throw it away, tear it out. It's better for you to lose one of your members than to have the whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than to have the whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of our Lord. Just a little scriptural note to start. Always notice when you're reading the Gospel, the reference to the right hand if your right hand causes you to sin. Because in the days of Jesus, the right hand was used for eating and social interaction. The left hand was used for hygiene. And so to cut off your right hand meant you could no longer eat, you could no longer live in community with others. So that's, that's even a deeper significance than just losing uh, the right hand. And remember, this is exaggeration that Jesus is using. He's not advocating a physical dismemberment. You know, it's like when we say, if I told you once, I told you a million times. Well, we don't do that a million times. So that's, that's the challenge. Now, starting with Eliah, now remember, don't forget also in the transfiguration, when Jesus went up Mount Tabor and was transfigured, who appeared to him? Moses and Eliah. Moses, the great lawgiver. Eliah, the great prophet of the old covenant. Now today, Eliah is on Mount Sinai where Moses was. And he traveled from, from uh, the northern kingdom 40 days. How long were the Israelites in the desert? 40 years. How many days of Lent do we observe? 40. You see the connections? So he wants, to, he wants to experience God. God is never experienced in the, in the giganticness of nature, the earthquakes, the thunder, the lightning, the, the fire, but it's in the whisper. I wish I could explain this better, but when, when we communicate with them, talk to one another, most of the time we don't even listen to each other's words, but the whole goal is to listen to other people's heart. That's what this is about. That's the whisper. Now the best that I can do to explain this is that if you're with a loved one that you love, that, you're, that you know well, spouses or parents and children, most of the time we don't even listen to what they say, but can you listen to their heart? Now again, the best way I have to explain that is if you're with somebody that you're very familiar with, you can sense that they're in a bad mood. They didn't say anything, but just their demeanor or their attitude or their looks, you know something is wrong. And then you say, well, what's wrong? And they say, nothing. Well, then you know something is really wrong. But to be able to sense that, 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 that deeper, whatever it might be, hurt without 
them even saying anything. That's what it means to listen to God. Are we that attentive to what God is saying to us? Beyond words. That's what this is about. Now what God is saying to us today is in the gospel. It's about marriage and divorce and so on. And that, that holds true what, what the old sisters used to tell us in Catholic schools. Be careful about what you think. Because whatever you think about a lot, you're eventually going to do. That's what Jesus is saying. Whether it's, it's sexual, adultery, whether it's anger, whether it's jealousy, even self-pity. If whatever you concentrate on, you're going to become. And so the challenge is to concentrate more on the ways of God, not just with reading the scriptures or praying, but just listening. And not for the thunder, the lightning, the fire, the earthquake, but the whisper of God. That's that little inner voice that says, I should do this or that, or I should stop doing this or that. That's the whisper of God. We continue to pray. We always pray for the church, that we could more and more concentrate on the message of Jesus than the preservation of the institution, we pray to the Lord. How we pray for those who serve us in public office, those leaders of government, leaders of health care, leaders of first responders, those who are struggling to bring our economy back, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are in any special need to listen to the voice, the whisper of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of the sick and the suffering, those in the hospital, nursing homes, those in hospice care. We pray to the Lord. We lift up all who have died to be embraced now at the renewal of the destiny of our lives, the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. We always pray for those in the prayer network of our parish, our community book of prayers, our staff prayers, all of the thoughts and worries, concerns of the members of our parish. We pray to the Lord. We always take a moment now to include our own prayers of heart and mind. Lord eternal God, we lift up these prayers. You hear us. You hear our voices of our hearts and imaginations. May we also hear your voice of love through Christ our Lord.